Welcome to another QSYS training session. In the next few videos, we're going to introduce you to external control of QSYS. You can assign almost any control in your schematics to the named controls bin, which allows it to be accessed by the administrator for change control commands, or by control scripts, or by third-party control systems, such as AMX or Crestron. If you're using one of these products, you should already be familiar with how to connect your device to the QSYS network, but this tutorial will show you how to issue commands and retrieve information from the QSYS core. First of all, let's pick some controls that we'd like our third-party device to access. Let's go to the schematic library and drag a gain component into our schematic and open its control panel. Let's give our third-party device control over the gain knob and mute button. We need to add them to our named controls bin in the left-hand pane. Simply drag each control into this area and release. You'll notice that each control is automatically named according to a simple naming scheme, the type of component followed by the type of control. Since this is the gain knob of a gain component, it's named gain gain. If you had named your component something besides its default name, that would show up as well. For instance, I'll label another gain component master and you'll see that in the named controls bin, it shows this name first before the component and control type. The controls are organized by their parent component's name, but you can use the filter button to toggle between this method or an alphabetical list of all named controls. If you would like to rename any of these controls, simply click it and provide your own name. I'll name this guy Mr. Control. Be sure that every control has a unique name, and be aware that if you use a space in the name like I have here, you'll have to do a little extra work later on. More on that in the next video. If you look at these controls back in your schematic, you'll notice a gray circle in its lower right corner. These circles are a reminder that the control has been added to the named controls bin. They will only appear in design mode and will disappear in emulation mode or when you deploy your design. If you have many different controls in your named control bin and haven't labeled them as you go, you might lose track of which is which. Don't worry. You can simply select any control and press Control F to access the Find tool. Just click on Jump to Source of Control to highlight the component in your schematic where this control originated. This function also works in the other direction. If you forgot what you named one of your controls in the named controls bin, click on the original control, press Control F, and select Jump to External Control. Its associated name will highlight in the Name Controls bin. You can also remove controls from the Name Controls bin just by pressing the Delete button. I'll delete this second gain, and we'll focus on our two simple controls, the Gain Gain and the Gain Mute. Let's save our design. I'll call mine EC Tutorial, and then we'll enter Emulation Mode, which you can always do by pressing F6. Now that we've labeled our controls for an external device, let's talk about how these devices will interface with the core. For this course, we'll be using a protocol called ECP, or External Control Protocol. This is a simple ASCII TCP socket method for remotely controlling QSYS via an Ethernet connection. A few things you should know about this protocol. ECP is accessible at TCP port 1702 on any QSYS core NICS IP address. ECP is fully functional in emulation mode. This means that you can test and troubleshoot your interface without needing to have access to a QSYS core. Just don't forget to change the IP address in your control system software to that of the core once you do get access to the hardware. Also, ECP will close the TCP socket after 60 seconds of inactivity, and each socket connection supports a maximum of four change groups, which we'll talk about in the third video. In order to send commands to QSYS with ECP, you'll use your third-party system controller. If you don't have one handy and you still want to follow along, you can do what I'm going to do and connect to the protocol TCP socket using Windows Telnet Client. In fact, this is a huge advantage that's unique to QSYS. Using Telnet, you can validate your control scripts without having any external hardware connected. We're using the Telnet to test the string commands so that when we write these command strings into either the AMX or Crestron software, we've already proven that the string commands work like they should. We'll use the PC that's running the designer software already to make this connection. Here's how. First, you need to make sure that Telnet is actually installed on your computer. Go to your Windows control panel, select Programs and Features, and then select Turn Windows Features On or Off. You need to make sure that the Telnet client is checked. If it isn't, 
check it to install Telnet. This process is the same if you have Windows 8. It just involves more hatred. <laughs> Where's the start button? All I want is the start button! Then, open a command prompt by clicking on the Windows button and typing CMD. Then type telnet space 127.0.0.1 space 1702. So, what on earth are you typing? Well, 127.0.0.1 is a generic loopback address that all computers can use. So it's telling your telnet to connect to your own device. 1702, as we mentioned earlier, is the TCP port number that the QSYS protocol server listens to. When you press Enter, the command line screen will clear and you'll have a flashing cursor. You're now connected and ready to send commands using external control protocol to QSYS. Before we go on, we should probably mention that ECP is actually only one of four ways you can control using external devices. The second way is a new protocol in QSYS Designer version 4.0 and higher called QSYS Remote Control, or QRC. QRC has all the functionality of ECP with lots of new functions as well. The big difference is that QRC is formatted with JavaScript Object Notation, or JSON. If you're familiar with this language, you should definitely go with a new QRC. But if you don't know JSON, it's safer to stay with ECP. You can also control QSYS using Lua scripting. And there are control script components in the designer software that let you write Lua code. Again, if you aren't familiar with this coding language, that's not the best option for you. The last method is to use the serial port. In fact, we recently created a Lua script which acts as a protocol adapter between any QSYS serial port and the TCP-based external control protocol. This script opens up the full functionality of the protocol we're covering in this video to RS-232 based clients and supports standard baud rates up to 23400. You can download this script in this tutorial's download section. But for now, we're going to stick with our ECP connection we've created using Telnet. Let's take a quick break and in the next section we'll start issuing some commands. Thanks and move on to the next section whenever you're ready.